You say the world is awash in money and you don't like it. All right, how much money we're talking about and why don't you like it? Well, first off, it's a lot of money, Stuart. We're talking about, if you look at globally, not just the U.S., because we talk about the U.S. printing a lot of money, but this has been a global phenomenon. But $32 trillion has been created since the beginning of the pandemic. Now, to put that in perspective, that's like 34 percent of GDP globally, which is like $94 trillion this year. That's so much money. Yeah. OK, so why don't you like it? Because it's, it's done the stock market a world of good. Well, first off, I feel bad for all those strategists out there that keep telling us we're going to get this big market correction right now, which it kind of sounds sound, right? We know that the Fed's probably going to at some point stop the bond buying or they're going to stop yep. tapering as much, right? We see peak earnings and right now we're seeing peak growth right now and that Biden administration wants to raise our taxes. So I get it. But the problem here is all this money is going to keep funneling its way into the stock market because companies right now have so much cash, which is going to be great for their profits because they're able to raise capital cheaply right now. But the problem is it's all going to be very, very inflationary. And I don't care what the Fed says here, Stuart. I don't think it's transitory here. If you look at you know the way wages are going up right now, you can't find workers. Demand's strong, and there's just not enough. We can't, we can't keep up with the demand right now. So when does the inflation crunch happen? I think we're there. I think everyone's ignoring the fact that it's not going away. And I think that's the biggest problem right now, is we think that eventually... Supply chains are going to get normal again, and you know wages at some point are going to peak out. I don't think it's happening. We have like 10.9 million jobs available right now in the U.S. That's 0.9 more than everyone expected that came out yesterday, and there's only 9 million people that are on unemployment right now. That's a huge gap that's not going to get filled. We're hiring right now. So, Stuart, if you ever need a side hustle, we could hire you. This other gig doesn't work out. A side but everybody's hustle? looking for workers right now. You, you call this a gig, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing a side hustle? Good Lord. <laughs> you want to be careful. you going to come back on this program, you think? But no, look, let's get serious. <laughs> uh, if we, inflation continues and the Fed keeps, uh, the money keeps on pouring in, pouring in, when does the crunch come? I mean, when does the market suddenly say, oh, my goodness, we, we do have an inflation problem. Interest rates are right. When does that happen? I think we're going to see here is you're going to see a huge melt up in the stock market. Melt Again, up. money's going to keep so up even further up than we're seeing right now. You know, very analogous to what we saw in 99, 2000 when we saw the tech bubble, yeah. when everything went through the roof. The same thing's going to happen here now. I wrote this a couple weeks ago. The whole market's going to melt up like a meme stock <laughs> is the way I see it. And at that point, when valuations just get so silly, you will get a correction at some point, and maybe we'll get a market crash. But in the meantime, interest rates have been creeping up week after week. You know, we're already up to like 1.3, 1.35% on the 10-year Treasury. Hmm. I can see that over 2% by the end of the year. Those pressures are real. And in your portfolio right now, you want to have things like commodities. You want to have I'm, cyclical stocks. Look, 